Good morning, good Sunday morning. It's me, Reverend Kevin Lee, checking in with my beautiful soul sisters and beautiful brothers around the world. It's great to see you all. And uh, just here, just really just checking in as we do every Sunday. And, and I just love gathering with my community because I get to just spend a little bit of time with you all just kind of shining the light for the week and just uplifting your spirits and and uh, just celebrating. I, I, you know, it just brings so much joy to my spirit to get to connect with you all again. You all text us, you email us, you sometimes we, uh, especially in the last couple of weeks, I've received a couple of cards in the mail, which really just uplifted my spirit. So thank you for those of you who've done that. And, and uh, each, each Sunday as we get together and we, we join together in this virtual family, in this new style of, of living that we're doing, you know, we just begin to share just different principles, different principles of life, uh, principles of being, principles of loving, principles of advancement, unfoldment, all types of things. And uh, this Sunday, I wanted especially to talk about principles of living in abundance. We live in an incredibly abundant universe. And with this universe, we understand that there are an infinite number of souls. There are an infinite number of dimensions of life. Even Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. He was not speaking about houses, physical homes. He was speaking about the dimensions of life, the, the spheres of reality. In other words, the dimensions, the, the vibrational planes of existence where the, the consciousness, the the, the personality of the soul resides when they cross from the earth plane back into, because we originally came from the spirit world, from the higher dimensions, back into those higher dimensions of life. So that's what Jesus was referencing, but he made it uh, analogous to the people, the language, the culture of the times. And uh, I just love this stuff. But today I, I wanted to, to connect with you all and to share with you the nine declaration of principles that you can find, especially here in the United States, in American spiritualism and divine metaphysics. Now, these are some of my absolute favorite to teach, especially our, our, our first time guests and, and newcomers to, that, that are interested in expanding themselves, moving beyond either Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, and just kind of understanding a higher truth that many cultures in the world actually embody these teachings, what I'm going to share with you. They embody them in such a way that, that it's really amazing because this is really universal higher truth that comes forward. And it comes through the prophets and the mystics and the seers, the oracles, the gurus, the swamis, the ascended masters of the times, the mediums, the, the psychics of the times. And, you know, most of us don't think about ministers and rabbis and preachers and priests and imams being psychics. But because they are living their life in such a profound spiritual way, in a way that connects them with the divinity of God in this universe, that, that divine God-loving force, because they're aligned to that principle, their own very psychic nature, whether they like the terminology or not, <laughs> It literally aligns them with that, that essence of God. You know, you know, so often people ask me, what's the difference between psychic and spiritual? And I'll tell you this, psychic is simply a function of our physical universe. Yes, it's an energetic function. It is a force of nature, the psychic function. And because we are made of stardust, because we are made of the elements of the stars of this universe, we are part of that faculty. You see, it's a faculty of living. And spiritual, spirituality is a practice of life, right? It's a way of being. It's not a way of doing. Psychic is a doing. But spirituality is being. And so spirituality is, is allowing the universe to touch in with you, to inspire you, and how we choose to live based on that psychic awareness, the intuitive awareness, that higher awareness, the divine wisdom that comes to us in our knowing and our feeling and our sensing nature, we become more spiritualized. So that is what living a spiritual life is all about. But today I want to talk about 
principles of living in abundance. And those principles that I alluded to just a little bit ago, let's go into those because uh, in divine metaphysics, in spiritualism, even in the religion of spiritism, which comes out of France and Brazil and, and uh, the followers of Allan Kardec, you know, we have this first principle. We believe in God as infinite intelligence. What does that mean? Well, it basically means that we believe that God is not a person on a throne, most certainly not a white man on a throne, like I was taught. God is not a person, a thing on a thing, on a throne. God is simply an all-pervasive force of love, of intelligence. So we call that force the infinite intelligence, because there's intelligence behind everything. Otherwise, there would be chaos in the universe. The universe wouldn't even exist. So God is the, the originating factor of order, intelligence, love, this universe, and even ourselves. And so as we push into our Declaration of Principle number two, this is what it says. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expression of infinite intelligence. Isn't that beautiful? We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expression of infinite intelligence. So what that is saying is that this very nature of God that is order, that is intelligent, and, and not in a thinking way, I want to make sure you're clear about that. It goes way beyond personality. God has no personality. So when people say God is speaking to me, they're not, God is not speaking to them. But they can feel that sense of a higher nature guiding them. It could be spiritual guides. It could be, uh, uh, it could be highly evolved beings, very evolved souls that are of a godly nature. But it's not God itself speaking to us. But we can feel the sense of this divinity connecting with us. So when we say we believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and, and spiritual, are the expression of infinite intelligence, we're saying that all of nature, whether it's physical, psychic, or spiritual, it's all an emanation of that originating factor that we call God, infinite intelligence. You like that? So then for our third declaration of principle of living, we affirm that a correct understanding of such expression right, the expression of God, and living in accordance therewith constitutes a true religion. Are we saying this is the only number one religion at the top of all of the religions in the world? Absolutely not. Did you hear me say that? No, <laughs> I would never say that because I understand on a deeper level, on a higher level, that all religions are valid and necessary for this planet, for this species called humanity. All religions are necessary. One is not better than the other. Some are harder and more challenging. Some are a little easier. But they're all necessary because all the different souls that, that come from the spirit world of life, these eternal souls that take on human incarnation, they've, they've accepted an incredible, incredibly difficult role. And they've come to earth, taken on human form, to learn these lessons. So let me repeat that again. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression of God being an all-pervasive force and living in accordance therewith constitute a true religion. In other words, on understanding these principles as I'm sharing them and embodying these spiritual principles, really making them the core of your, your philosophy of life, that constitutes a true religion. It's the action. It's the embodiment that makes it a true religion. It's the thoughts, the words, and the actions of each of us that embodies a true religion when we act accordingly in these ways. Number four, we believe in personal responsibility and that we create our happiness or our unhappiness as we live in harmony or discord with natural, physical, and spiritual laws. In other words, we believe that we as human souls are totally 100% responsible for our thoughts, our words, our actions. And if I harm you, it is my responsibility to come and knock on your door, <laughs> bring your flowers, do whatever it takes to make sure that I 
ask your forgiveness, that I ask that I that I bring forward an apology, that I step it up, take the high road, that I do what I can to make things right with you directly. I don't need to go to some preacher, priest, rabbi, imam. Don't come knocking on my door. Don't ask me to pray to God for you. I am a, pre a preacher. That's not my role. You are an expression of God. You're an expression of this universe. You have divinity within. You have that connection, the divine spark within. Go within. Find God within. Connect with that higher power and begin talking to the principle of God. And so we believe in personal responsibility, meaning we do not believe, nor do we teach, this principle that someone could die on a cross for us to wipe away all of our sins for all eternity. Makes no sense to us. We are souls, we have free will, which means we have inherent, uh, we have, we have uh, uh, innate, I guess that's the word, we have an innate responsibility to think, to speak, and to act in a highly evolved way, in a spiritual way. It is our responsibility, not someone else, to uh, supplicate on our behalf that we be forgiven. That's not how it works. Spirit has told us that. And so when we cross into the spirit world of life, and, and we as souls, we drop these physical bodies, our soul looks back upon its life. And, it's, and basically it says, Kevin, what did you do for humanity? How did you treat other people? How did you treat yourself? What lessons did you learn? Do you feel you evolved? And so with that understanding, I want you to understand that, that we are personally responsible for everything in our life. So we have to make it right. Number five, we affirm the existence and personal identity of the individual continues after leaving the physical world. And what that says is the essence of this young man, Kevin, continues into the higher realms. I drop the body here. My spiritual body is retained in, in an etheric way and I travel back as a soul into the spirit world of life. I continue, I, I, I maintain my personality, my ego, my intelligence, my feelings, my emotions, my memories. So I'm a thinking, feeling soul, a being. I don't just become this, th this beautiful white orb that sits on a cloud and plays the harp all day. That's not how it works. I'm still a thinking, living being. I'm an evolving being. I can still have emotions in the fourth dimension of life. And so with that understanding, how many of us have had dreams where we knew, we knew, I had one this week, my grandmother came to visit me and I could feel her touch and I could hear her voice. And when I woke up, I was filled with, I was filled up with emotion. I was so happy I knew she had visited. That was a visitation. Her personality, her intelligence, the feelings, the emotions, her soul, all of the memories came back. She brought those to me. And so just as she can communicate with me, we can communicate with those souls through the process of mediumship. And that leads me into the next principle, which is number six, we affirm that communication with spirit is a natural experience demonstrated through mediumship. I, as a sensitive organism, meaning this human body, this human mind, right? And so the sensitivity of me, the, the intuitive, the, the, the divine influence of me that as it moves and I connect with that, I'm able to raise my vibration and connect to the minds, my mind to spirit mind, meaning the mind of another soul. And I'm able to bring forward information, memories, personality, their gender, their age, uh, and, and messages of love and hope, inspiration, guidance, caution. That's mediumship. Master Jesus, our, our beautiful brother, human brother, who had an amazingly evolved soul, he's not our savior. He's our brother. He was a human being just like you and I, who had an incredibly evolved soul. His soul brought forward the highest vibration of all ascended masters, the Christ consciousness to this planet. Beautiful. He, Jesus, demonstrated all gifts of the spirit as the Bible speaks of and teaches. And he taught the average human being how to, to unfold and to demonstrate and to serve their fellow humans. He taught his disciples, average human beings, just like you and I, 
how to access those gifts and how to use them in a profound way that uplifted and transformed lives, healed lives. And if Jesus was willing to teach the average human being, there is no reason why you and I cannot do the same. I understand what scripture says. I've read the Bible many times. And there are parts of the Bible that were conveniently added to maintain control over the congregations, to instill fear and to maintain a gateway between the person in the pew and the person on the cloud, which is really the God force. And that was through the priest or the minister or the rabbi or the imam. And that's how a lot of religious institutions control the process, right? But let, that's another, di that's another, <laughs> another lesson. Let's go into number seven. Number seven, we affirm the principles, the examples of prophecy and healing that are contained in the Bible and other sacred texts of other religions. They are divine attributes found in all people, just as I said in the previous statement. The essence of our spiritual gifts is natural, is psychic, is intuitive. It is an emanation of the function of this universe, the divinity moving through it all. And it is innate in all people. We can be healers, we can be mystics, we can be leaders, we can be even the voice of the gift of voice, the gift of my, my speaking and serving today as a gift of spirit, connecting with you in a way that lifts, uplifts your spirit. I get your messages. You guys send messages telling me how much these things mean to you that I, I keep sharing which means I'm, I'm sharing my gift of spirit. It doesn't have to be the gift of healing, the gift of discernment of spirits, the gift of, of, of prophecy, revelation, speaking in tongues, discerning what the tongues mean. It can be much more than that. Leading a people, taking care of abandoned animals. It can be a lot of things. Number eight, we believe, this is one of my favorites. It's gone back thousands of years. This one is so universal. Fascinating that it's come forward into all religions and all cultures of all times. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Found in every culture, every religion in all times, going back thousands of years, far back, far beyond Christianity, Judaism, Islam. Thousands of years, people. What a beautiful, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In other words, serve your neighbor. Just be nice to others because you would want them to be nice to you. Beautiful, beautiful principle of life. And lastly, number nine, the declaration of principle number nine, we affirm that the doorway to reformation, this is powerful, the doorway to reformation is always open to any soul here or hereafter. What does that mean? Well, that strange word, reformation, it kind of means reform, doesn't it? When we drop this human physical body and we go, we return back to the world of spirit in our, in our beautiful spiritual form, our, new, our spiritual bodies that we've always had. When we return as souls back to spirit, we go through this process, this self-judgment. No one else judges us, remember? God doesn't judge us. There's no St. Peter at the gate judging us. No book is judging us. That's not how it works, you guys. Our soul analyzes how it acted, how it could have acted. And we determine what we need to reform ourselves. Do we need a, a time period of healing? Do we need a time period of education? Do we need a, a time period of mentorship from higher evolved beings? Do we need to be reformed? What can we do to reform ourselves? So we go through this process of, of, of healing and bettering and, and putting ourselves back together in a higher vibrational way. We reform ourselves and that is open to any soul here or hereafter. And when I say any soul, it goes far beyond humanity. Isn't that interesting? Why would I say that? Why would spirit say that? Because the human species is not the only species of, of the living soul in this universe. There are countless species that we cannot even comprehend. Many of them do look like us in different ways, but they're humanoid. And, and yes, it's another strange conversation to have another day, but 
the, the, the incredible beauty and, and the incredible complicated infinite intelligence of God did not just create one beautiful, gorgeous human species in this amazing infinite universe. And actually the multiverses. Just as we have a universe, there are multiple universes just like ours. Spirit speaks of that. Scientists have actually discovered 13 dimensions. So you can't tell me there's only the third dimension. And so we understand that souls, wherever they may be in this dimension, on other planets, in other dimensions, they have the same right of reformation. And they could be good by nature, or they could be terribly destructive by nature. They could be criminals or abusers or people who have done mass atrocities to their species, to their planet, to the very nature of life itself. They're still souls. They still have the right to reform, to to, to, to have the, the essence of God, that light of God in their life more. We are beings of light. We're beings of love and light. With that being said, when people pray for us, we literally are being refilled with the light of God. When we ask, when we connect in a high way and meditate, we are literally raising our frequency. We are refueling ourselves with the light of God. That is a process of reformation. Every day when I sit to meditate and I tithe back, a portion of this precious life that I've been given every day. If I'm breathing today, I got purpose today, which means I need to get busy. So I tithe back every day, just a portion of my life, 30 minutes, one hour, whatever it may be, back to the source that gave me life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, angels, for giving me breath and life and purpose today. I give that back to you. I reconnect to you. Make me better, strengthen me, and inspire me, bring wisdom forward, give me ideas how I can better myself and reform myself so that I can be a better servant, so that I can do good unto others. And those are the declarations of principles that many, many, many cultures, communities, centers, people in around the world follow. I followed them for many years now. We call them the declaration of principles of spiritualism, of spiritism, and divine metaphysics. They're very dear to my heart, just as I hope they brought a little bit of love, a little bit of light, a new understanding into your spirit today. From my heart to yours, I leave that with you.